miles from that. And so I was like doing the math to figure out with the rate that the lake was receding, how old would the structure have been? It was built right on it. And it came out to around four, I think it was like 400,000 years old, which is like way before they said that people were building anything. And behind this site is a Puma Punku, which I actually didn't have any pictures of that one. But it looks like a, a dump yard. Like giant stones were just tossed into a pile that weren't being used, like extra pieces. And those stones were all look like Legos almost, like they would fit together and they were intricately designed so that they could be put together without having to use mortar or anything like that. Another site, Easter Island. Statues are pretty well known. Um, I watched a documentary where they were showing a whole bunch of people rolling them on the trees and putting them up. And I'll go along with that for now because they were able to do it. But um, my big issue is another spot where they have them. And they have these giant stone hats on their head. And you can't roll those on top of their heads. So they still had to have a way to get those up on top. They also said that the ancestors on the island or the elders said that they were built by a holy man who could speak to the spirits and that they all floated into their positions all over the island. And so that's how they were built and put up. And this is probably my favorite site, which is um, Baalbek in Lebanon, which has the largest stones moved that they found on Earth that have been cut. This wall is um, a corner of it where they have the Trilithon stones, which are three of the largest stones, which each of them weigh over a thousand tons. And they were lifted and put in place. <clears throat> Later on in time, the Romans found this place and built the temple on top of the old temple, and they renamed it the Jupiter Temple. Um, I have to get some newer pictures where they show, you can see the age difference from the bottom levels, the giant stones, and then the Roman, which used little stones. And this is the Stone of the South, which is supposed to weigh around 1,300 tons, or yeah, 1,300 tons. And this is a short distance away from that temple. And they think this is where they were cut and removed to where they were built. And I actually just read that they found another stone that was even bigger than this one, buried. So these are some of the biggest things no crane on earth can lift any of these stones. There is no way we have any technology to even move these. And yet, the ancient people were able to move them and lift them, put them where they wanted. Some unexplained artifacts. The Olmec heads in Mexico, Baghdad battery in Lebanon, the Sar Iron Pillar, um, the Sakar Bird, Mild Plains. Um, just go through and share those one at a time. <laughs> so the Olmec heads, the oldest faces in Mexico, which are obviously black people. And I remember when I was younger, read something, I don't remember what that was, where an archaeologist said these are not actually 
people's faces. These are actually jaguars. And they just look like that, but they're really jaguars. So mm -hmm. These are not people's faces. A new theory is that they had blunt tools, and so they couldn't make pointed noses and thin lips. So they messed up <laughs> and made the faces look like black people. <laughs> With braids, right? Right. Nice, intricate Helms. designs on their helmets. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, these heads. We took a trip and drove around Mexico, and there were heads all over the place. We drive through a little town, and they would have one in the center of this town. Had nice little spots for them. That's just something they don't show. Is this at a museum? Yes. This is um in Jalapa, which is on the east coast of Mexico. Uh, this is in the Anthropology Museum there. They had several heads. The other one is um, in my book. I didn't show that one. But it's the biggest one. It's a huge, I think it was a 60 ton head that they found. And all of these were giant, found in the jungle. Like, where you would have to go through swamps and rivers to get these from where they were carved. And so, scientists don't know how they were moved into the positions where they were found. Although, I think all the heads were removed from where they were found. They all took them in, moved them in different places. The Baghdad battery, um, they found this and realized that they could create a battery with this. So they knew that just using like some lemon juice or some vinegar, you can create a charge with this. And they said they were using it for electroplating jewelry. But this was just like a little teeny one. And they found giant jars. So. It's pretty evident that they had electricity. Um, the saw iron pillar, um, this is in a mosque, in a courtyard of a mosque in India. And it's made of iron, wrought iron. And according to iron that we use, the age of this, because the structure around it has deteriorated or crumbled away mostly. And scientists don't know how this iron has not also just rusted away. They say that it was a smooth coating of an unknown substance since they can't find anything like this anywhere else in the world. So they're still trying to figure out how this iron is still standing today while the building around it crumbled away. The Saqqara bird, which is a model that was found in Saqqara, and at first it was thought to be just a toy, but it's been researched and we've got a bunch of documentaries on it where they've shown it does have an aerodynamic build. Like this is more like a model plane than just a plane or a bird. And the tail is one of the big issues because birds have tails that are flat, horizontal instead of vertical. And airplanes use that as their model. So that's one thing that showed that the ancient people did have knowledge of flight. It's another one, model planes that were found in Ecuador and Colombia. And I actually just found out then that these model planes are on display at the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. So they have these gold planes there. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're gold makes it pretty much undetermined about how old they are. Because gold doesn't tarnish or 
have any reaction to anything. So these are some ancient planes. They think they were probably around 10,000 BC, but could be far older than that. Um, the antithera device or mechanism was um, found in the Mediterranean Sea and they said that it was down there in the ocean or in the sea for at least 2,000 years and they think this is a prototype computer where it was used for computing and possibly guidance on some sort of vessel where they think this is used to calculate star positions and constellations and possibly used for some other uses that nobody knows. Um, Perry Reyes map. It's a map that was found by a um, Turkish general. Perry Reyes, and he said he found this, and it was an ancient map when he found it. And this was interesting because this section here is supposed to be the northern coast of Antarctica, which at that time, when he found it, was completely covered in ice. And it's just now starting to melt to where we can see where the actual coastline is. And this is supposed to be a very ancient map, which means that somebody knew where the coastline was before it froze over. And nobody knows exactly when it was free of ice last. I was doing some reading where they have pyramids on Antarctica. You know, I just read about that too. They found a pyramid down there. Sure, they're gonna find a lot of stuff down there. Um, the clerk store spears were little balls that appeared to have been carved, and they were found in rock that was two billion years old. And South African miners have been finding these all over. And Archaeologists are at a loss because of the age of the rock that they were found in. Like there weren't supposed to be any humans or anybody that could carve anything two billion years ago. So these are probably the oldest artifacts on the planet, at least that we've found so far. You say they found them everywhere, like all over the planet? Well, no, just in South Africa. Just in yeah, all over South Africa. Yeah. And so I'm going to do these real quickly. This is the last little section. So I looked at ancient space travelers, like stories and things from all over the world. Um, in Utah, the Anasazi, who were like in Colorado, Arizona that area, the Mahabharata, which is a story from India, they talk about their gods. The Dropa stones, which are stones that were found in um, Asia. Um, Pakal, who was a king, but they said he came from another planet, and his, um, he has a city basically in Mexico. Um, Abydos, which is in um, Kemet, um, and one of the it's a city there. Um, they have them in Algeria, Australia, um, Uzbekistan, and then the Sumerians, which were in like Lebanon, all over the Middle East. So this is the picture from Utah, one of them, where they have these figures that have like rounded heads with the big round eyes and look like ghosts. They call this the ghost panel. They say these were spirits who came bringing knowledge. 
The Anasazi were a people who lived in, um, this is in Ka 